Okay, our next speaker is Andre, and he's going to talk to us about Java, satellites, and Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andre. I'm a software developer. I'd like to talk about Air to Cloud. Uh, this is software which lets you download the data from satellites. Yet another. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the design, uh, the features, and a bit of future plans, and answer questions. So, but before I move on, um, a brief history. So, um, several years ago, I decided uh, to contribute to space technology and improve our space tech somehow. But for a software developer, it's really hard to do. Uh, really hard to find the niche and uh, and all stuff. So I found a project called uh, Setnox. Uh, this project was uh, about building a base station for tracking satellites. I was really excited and I started building it, trying to run this uh, on my MacBook, compiling. Oh, um, yeah, I had a lot of issues with that uh, because of different Python versions, different C++. There were a lot of issues I had. And, um, uh, I actually opened a uh, Setnox UI trying to find what the data Setnox can provide and how they can contribute to the, maybe the web uh, server. And I didn't find any data there, only waterfalls and some audio files. So I was really disappointed at that time. And what a software developer would do in, in such case, I decided to build my own station, <laughs> of course. Um, and my base station should do... Uh, all these things. So it should, I should see some pictures from space, right? Uh, this is uh, super cool. It's visible. I would like to see any telemetry, uh, the solar panels, voltage, uh, everything should be stable. Uh, I should be able to run my uh, base station on solar panels somewhere in the woods and leave it for years, don't bother with it, uh, and get the data eventually. And uh, my base station should be stable and. Uh, and it should be simple, uh, and it should do one thing, just gather da the data from the satellites, but it should do it well. So I started to, to play with the design uh, a bit, and um, uh, I came with the following. So um, it, it consists of two steps. The first one is uh, very simple. When a satellite uh, comes over the horizon, uh, my base station should schedule an observation from my hotel there. It should get the data, zip it, save to the disk for the further processing. So nothing fancy here, super simple. Uh, just save the data to the disk uh, and execute the next step. So when satellite is, uh, is left the sky, then base station should stop the hotel there and just execute the next step. Uh, next step, the following, it reads the data from a disk, simply demodulate it, simply decode it, and save it onto disk result. And optionally, maybe save it somewhere centrally for aggregation purposes and sharing with the community and the scientists. Uh, and this step could be executed concurrently with the first one, uh, and so that I could optimize the, the, the load. Yeah, all I have to do is just simply demodulate and decode the data. Right? So I have no idea how to do it, um, especially three years later, three years ago. Um, but I knew that somebody else can do it better than me, right? And I started Googling it and Google it and Google it. And I found a project called GeoSatellites. <laughs> you may have heard about it, right? <laughs> so this project contains a lot of satellites and a lot of decoders from, from a lot of uh, companies, and it's a really good uh, place uh, to look at. I uh, highly recommend uh, the work that Daniel did. And uh, this is a special hard work because uh, the satellite uh, uh, owners, they do normally do not share the protocol details, right? And it's really hard to find the, the way to, to get the data out of bits. So this project was completely uh, fit my purpose, right? Uh, but what the next step, steps for me to do, right? 
the first step, I can use GNU Radio, right? Because the uh, JSET lies based on GNU Radio. I can use GNU Radio. I can uh, start building it, uh, working uh, with the Python uh, versions on my MacBook, uh, uh, and feeling pain. Um, and essentially, it would be the same what Satnox did. Uh, and I, I didn't want to follow that route. Uh, another option, I could write my own uh, DSP framework, right? <laughs> and spend my uh, next five years trying to debug it and see if it really works. Um, that's too much time consuming. I don't want to do it again. Or maybe I can do something in between. And I did it. <laughs> uh, I used Java. Um, uh, I decided to rewrite uh, the geosatellite piece uh, in Java. Well, of course, I had to rewrite a piece of GNU Radio in Java, right? Um, the first thing, the first, uh, why Java, right? Uh, the, first, uh, the first reason is uh, because I, I know Java. I'm a Java developer. The second thing is uh, write once, run everywhere, slogan it still works. I can uh, run my Java program on my MacBook, run it on uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, in production and uh, test it in Travis CI or some, somewhere else where Java can run. So this is very convenient. I don't want to install Conan yeah? <laughs> framework to do the package management and build the different options. Um, yeah, and this is single language uh, for, the, for the whole stack. If somebody tried to uh, get the satellite data, you might know that uh, you need to compile a lot of dependencies for GNU Radio, some dependencies for geosatellites, and hope for the best. Uh, this is a single language. Uh, the thing is, I had to uh, rewrite a piece of uh, GNU Radio. Um, and I did it the smart way. <laughs> of course, uh, I decided to um, implement the interfaces and to make my blocks binary compatible with the GNU Radio blocks. So the input parameters in my Java implementation are the same, and uh, output and input they are the same. So what I did, I created file source, run it for the interested GNU Radio block, and save it somewhere. Then I did the same for Java and just compared the result between the GNU Radio output and my own output, and it actually worked. All my blocks are binary compatible up to five decimal places. So for, for if it is a float, then five decimal places are okay. Um, so um, th th there's a differences, of course, uh, in the between the GNU Radio and my own implementation. The first one I'm writing in Java, so in Java we have very <laughs> interesting peculiarities. Uh, so the first thing is the garbage collection and the memory management. So. You can allocate buffers and then deallocate them because that would create a great pressure on a garbage collector. So for that, I um, pre-allocate everything. So my garbage collector just do not work at all. Just don't bother with this. So these blue things are actually pre-allocated stuff. So uh, normally, as you can see, the, there's no new operator and nothing is uh, allocated. Uh, Another thing, another major difference is a single thread. So I must admit that the scheduler co concept is <laughs> too uh, complex for me. <laughs> so I decided not to implement it at all. <laughs> um, and as Marco said previously, the, yeah, a single thread might work. And actually, it, I think it's might even better than running on, par par on, a, on a multiple cores. Because if you have a multiple cores, you have to copy the memory from one core to another core, do a lot of uh, synchronization between them, and that could hit uh, performance. And there was no, it would be a lot of cache misses as well if I do this on several cores. So I decided to go single thread and uh, write uh, my flow graph as a se sequence of blocks. They just change one after another and get an input one from another. Uh, so from a, from a programmer perspective of view, they're just blocks, one to one. For the GVM, which runs this, is just a lot of cycles. If they, and it, GVM can optimize it very efficiently 
and compile it to the native code because everything is executed on the same CPU, on the same, um, on the same, on the same on, on a single CPU. And another thing why, why I chose this because I would like to run is on Raspberry Pi. And on Raspberry Pi we have um, four cores. So one core would be allocated for this Autel SDR. The second core would be allocated to de modulating decoding. Uh, the third core might be allocated to some system-wide operations, and the uh, fourth core might be just in case. <laughs> All right. Um, the third difference is tests. <laughs> so uh, my inner enterprise developer admires this picture. <laughs> I wrote a lot of tests, uh, so that's why I'm saying my blocks are binary compatible. Uh, uh, I have proofs, uh, of course, and I wrote uh, a bit more tests um, for the decoders as well. So I took some data from a satellite recordings project, which is run by Daniel as well, uh, and some uh, data from r Cloud, my own uh, uh, project. So what's the difference between the two? So satellite recordings, they contain very strong signal, which is very useful when you want to do uh, to, to test for your decoders. You want to make sure that uh, you understand uh, protocol uh, properly, and yeah, it's, 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 it's easier to do a reverse engineering. But if you want to uh, decode signal in the wild, you have to, do, uh, to deal with the multipath, with the Doppler, with, uh, with the neighborhood antenna, and whatever might come up. So I have two types of tests for these. One for the protocol, and the second one for the for the real time signal, which I collected from um, from antenna. And three years later, <laughs> well, nearly, <laughs> I implemented uh, some satellites, the active satellites from GR satellites. I implemented uh, all transient repositories because the satellite uh, owners, they provide some code, which is useful. But it's not normally, f doesn't normally feed into other stacks. So I implement everything and just run it on a single thing. Um, uh, Libfec, everything. And I got result. <laughs> um, this is a real telemetry from a real satellite, from a real space. <laughs> uh, it contains some uh, boot count, uh, some voltages, uh, solar panel thing, whatever, really cool thing in JSON. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, also, uh, my base station can automatically schedule uh, the next passes for, the, for the, some, some satellites. As you can see, the green line is a line where uh, I was able to decode at least one packet. Uh, yeah, for, so as you can see, some I was not able to decode, some Working fine. Uh, then um, I can aggregate the data. So several base stations uh, can transmit the data, and I can analyze it on a central place somewhere here. Um, and and, and, and uh, you can share this data with the Setnox again, with uh, some researchers, FunCube, Warehouse, whatever. And a, and, a, and a great bonus, I have a real picture from space. Here it is. Ah, <laughs> this is a night, night, night uh, this is night side of the earth, as you may see, <laughs> and this one is a bright one. Uh, this is a, uh, this is an image from uh, Meteor M. Uh, this is a Russian satellite uh, protocol LRPT. Uh, yeah, and it can, can transmit the data, and I can one day I can put this image onto the Google Maps and see how the weather changes over time. Uh, but for now, it's there. <laughs> uh, actually, it looks much uh, better on my laptop. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm used to Discord antenna. Oosh. Uh, this is very simple, basic, and, and with a negative gain. <laughs> uh, but it fits my purpose. Then a very standard block, V3, that's there, Raspberry Pi. Right. Uh, I'm talking about Java, but never said about performance, right? <laughs> um, 
But let's say that the phone's not really needed here, and here's why. Um, the first thing is satellite, they, they transmit the beacons one way only. So you cannot reply it to, to the signal. So this is one-way transmission. Uh, no need for real time. Then RTL is there. This is only uh, the receiving. Uh, it can only receive the data. So uh, even if I can respond to it, uh, I, the RTL doesn't allow me to do it. So I don't really real time response to these packets. And no one on Earth is really interested in re getting real time beacons in, in his university. OK, give me more data. I can spend any amount of time doing a decoding. Um, I've run some performance metrics. So for CubeSat, uh, this is a very narrow band signal, 10, 15 minutes for the full pass. So this is nearly real time because it takes nearly 10 minutes to, for the satellite to pass over. And one hour and a half for Meteor M. Oops. Uh, but that's not really uh, Java related. This is what we're doing. Uh, anyway, performance is not really needed in, in, in this, uh, for, the, for this kind of software. Uh, I can optimize it maybe if just to reduce power consumption and run on solar panels. But for now, it's okay. All right? Uh, what can be improved? Uh, demodulators. They definitely need to be improved. I haven't found any uh, resources which clearly state what, what the parameters for demodulators are standard. So the, I have only BPS, uh, I have only bare curve for BPSK demodulator. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> uh, maybe I need uh, more parameters like time to lock, time to relock the signal, uh, any other parameters. Uh, for FSK mod demodulator, we need bare curve or whatever. Uh, Multipath propagation uh, is not covered here as well. So this is just AVGN uh, um, channel. Um, yeah, and I need more. Um, more demodulators, FSK, QPSK, all, all SK uh, parameters, uh, real world signals, um, the lack of them, but it's getting better. More satellites, as Daniel pointed out, satellites constantly launching in space and they're constantly falling on Earth, so this never ending battle between the Earth gravity and satellites. And we started to uh, yeah, support them more and more, maybe FPGA stuff uh, to optimize the modulators and reduce power consumption. Um, yeah, and this is it, I think. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. I have open to questions. Uh, the question was, what uh, support for famous actor uh, well, I support for any RTLSDR compatible sticks. So if uh, they can be run with RTLSDR program, then I, I can support them. No, no, I'm a single developer. I can support the variety of hardware, so just well, only one. So, sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah. So so you're actually better than theoretical Mac. <laughs> uh, this is a. The, so so my demo is is a, is a red one. So it's it's. it's uh, uh, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, but this this bear, bear curve covers on the AVGN channel. If I want to test against the multipath propagation channel, then the bear curve will be different, and it might be worse than the theoretical. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. So I tried. I spent some time on tuning it, and actually, I took a lot of code from GR satellites <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Thanks. Question. Uh, so, so can you? Why use Java instead of Radio? 
Yeah, because of uh, complexity. So if if I want to run uh, my thing on a, on a, on a, on a MacBook then I need only Java dependency. If I need to run GNU Radio, I need a lot of dependencies and dependencies of dependencies. And sometimes it's not very convenient. And sometimes uh, I want to run uh, the tests in cloud. So all the tests they're running uh, in cloud, in Travis CI integration. So I'm not sure if I would ever be possible to install all these dependencies there. Uh, questions? Sorry? Have you tried the generate of the... Uh, no, I, I, I just focused on the decoding. Uh, <coughs> Sorry? Did you also plan to put this onto the space segment of the satellite? Or is it just receiving segment using space? I mean, could this be on a... Uh, yeah, the question was, uh, is, is there any plans to put on a, on a space segment? Uh, I think it's uh, not my choice. <laughs> so if I, anyone would like to use it, it's freely open, uh, just use it, see the data. You can just open GitHub and see the tests, everything's there. Do you see the possibility of Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so all, all decoders, yeah, it could be possibly used, yeah. All right, I think this is it. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much.